Hi guys, it is another week. It's a, it's been a bit of a chaotic week for various reasons. Um, I've had a, a heap of stuff to do, a heap of really, really good fun technical stuff uh, and a bunch of other stuff going on uh, at home that I've had to sort out. Really, really good stuff. I'll probably talk about this later on. But it's, uh, it's just been one of those times where like actually maintaining focus on things has just been enormously difficult. And I had really good grand ideas about stuff I was going to do this week. I had lots of really good ideas. I, I did one of them. <laughs> I'm going to talk about that. Uh, and in fairness, some of the other things are a little bit longer term. So I'll talk about those a little bit later as well. But um, I, I thought one of the things I might touch on first, because this has been a bit of a planning week, is upcoming events. Because I've got a bunch of stuff coming up. So, for example, in only about, let me see, three, three weeks? Must be three weeks. Something like three weeks. Uh, I'm heading off again. I'm going to the US. It is three weeks because this is a short month. I just remembered that. So I'm going to be back in Seattle for the uh, Microsoft MVP Summit. Uh, that runs 4 to 9th of May, uh, which will be cool. I haven't been there for a couple of years. I didn't go last year because there's just too much stuff happening. Then I'm going to Vegas and I'm going to be doing a keynote at the, the Ascend EpiServer conference. Uh, so that's going, to be, uh, that's going to be kind of cool. I think that's going to be a pretty big event. Uh, Vegas is <laughs> Vegas is Vegas. <laughs> you know that'll be uh, that'll be a couple of days in Vegas. Now I do have a day off in Vegas, so I was thinking about what are some of the cool things I could do in a, in a Vegas kind of style. So if you have done something epic in Vegas that you think I'd really like, uh, let me know. I might go and do that. Then I'm going to go to San Fran. Uh, so I'm going to be doing a bunch of plural site stuff in San Fran. Uh, I've got some courses to record. I'll talk more about those later on. I, I think the ones I'm going to do there with some people there are actually going to be really, really super cool. One of them is something related to things that people have been asking for for a long time. And another one is with a guy who does some really cool stuff who I think many of you will know that I'm just really looking forward to what I think will uh, be the outcome of that, what I think will be a very positive outcome of that. So I'm going to do that. And then I had some downtime in San Fran. So I, I tweeted the other day, I was like, hey, is anyone in San Fran and a big tech company want to catch up? Because it's like a, it's a good opportunity for me to go and meet people. And, and, and then I, I, I think I bit off a little bit more than I could chew. So there's a, there's a, lot, of, a lot of people who said, yeah, come into all the sorts of companies that, that you know of that, that are based in San Fran. So I'm, I'm going to try and extend the trip, I think, maybe by another day. Go around, see a whole bunch of people. It'll be really, really cool. So I'll be doing that. And then I come home. So that'll be about half of March gone. Then I come home. And then at the start of April, I've got to go to Hawaii. I know, it's terrible. Uh, they, they said, oh, there's, there's like beaches and palm trees and nice water. <laughs> and I looked outside and went, yeah, what else you got? <laughs> you know, because this is like, this is normal life here. Uh, they got volcanoes, which is pretty cool. We don't have volcanoes. I'm going to Hawaii for the uh, LocomocoSec conference. And I'm actually pretty looking forward to that because, first of all, I've never been to Hawaii and I think Hawaii would be a cool place. Uh, second of all, Scott Helm is joining me as well. He'll be there and we always have a lot of fun, which will be really neat. Uh, we're bringing our families too, so we actually get to have a bit of a family holiday. And you know, as, as much traveling as I do and as much as I get around, the, the chances to actually have time with the family in places are significantly rarer. So I'm actually really looking forward to that. So I'll be off there in Hawaii for, uh, for a while. And then uh, as we get back into Australia in May, we've got the uh, NDC security event literally just out here, walking distance from my home, which is nice. I mean, that is a much better commute than what I'm used to. So NDC security is going to be awesome. Scott's going to come over for that one again as well. I'm going to see how many spiders and things I can put in his bed because I just think that's going to be hilarious. He's going to come and stay here. So I said to the kids, you know, like Scott's going to stay. What do you think we should do with the Australian animals while he's here? Uh, and they've been working very hard on what should be done. So, so that's going to be fun. I should video that, shouldn't I? Anyway, so we'll be doing that in May. And then looking just a little bit further ahead, a uh, month after that, I'll be back in Europe again. We'll be back to summer. So I'll be back in Oslo in the start of June. And I want to try and spend two, maybe three weeks there because summer in Europe is pretty cool. Uh, do a few workshops, do a few talks, come home. Yeah, it'll be good. So I've got all that coming up. I've also got a heap of other events, uh, particularly around Australia, Sydney and Melbourne, that I'll be traveling down for. And a lot of these are things like there's a vendor who does a security thing uh, and they say, hey, can you come and talk about the data breaches and the everything else stuff? And then we'll talk about our security thing. 
Uh, and they're, they're usually commercial events, like they do actually pay me to do these, which is good because I, I do actually need to do <laughs> commercial things as well as all the free conferences. Uh, and uh, they usually open those, so people can come along. They normally like getting a bit of promotion too. So I'm gonna ask, uh, particularly for the Aussie folks, where or, or when those events are, and I know when they are, I'm going to them, but uh, when I can talk about them, and I'll put them on the list too. So that's a bunch of stuff coming up just in the first half of this year. Now, moving on to other things, uh, and this is gonna lead us into the, the blog post I wrote this week. I did the pwned passwords last year. So remember this was like the, the 320 million passwords that have appeared in other data breaches in the past. And you could download as SHA-1 hashes, so there's, there's some pseudo anonymization there. You could download them and then when people uh, register, change password, sign into your website, and they give you your password. You could hash their password, compare it. If it matches any one of those 320 million, you could go, hey, your password was in a data breach. You probably don't really want to be using that one anymore. That went really well. With the benefit of time, I've got a lot more passwords. Uh, I'm going to tell you the number when I actually launch it, but it is significantly more than the 320 million. What I will also say is that I am going to provide these in, in a ranking. So there'll be prevalence, there'll be one through to N. And this is the one that's been used the most. And I, I think it is one, two, three, four, five, six, no surprises there. And you know, the, the next one's gonna be terrible as well. And then as you go down the order, you get to passwords that have been used less frequently, still exposed, but used less frequently. And, and the reason for this is so that organizations can say, well, it's going to be rough if we exclude every single one of these passwords, right? Like people are going to try and register and just continually hit brick walls. What we might do is exclude the first X number of passwords, you know? So if you try and use one of those, you can't. And this is going to give them degrees of basically crapness of the password. Like it's everything from really, really terribly crap to might have been okay once, but now crap because it got leaked somewhere. So that's going to be really cool. There are other things I'm doing with this, which I can't talk about yet, which are also gonna be extra cool, particularly around the privacy and anonymity side of things as well. So I'm really, really happy with, with what's going to come out there, and I'll be able to talk more about that when it goes live. That is one of the things that I've been working on uh, quite extensively this week. And in fact, I had this really, really cool implementation idea. From an architecture perspective, I thought it was epic. And then I tried to make it work. And then that's, that's been, that has uh, led to many phone calls and emails with people, which un unfortunately so far hasn't really bared fruit. But regardless, the thing will all work uh, as the present one does. It's just a question of how awesome the tech underneath it is. Now, as part of doing this exercise, one of the things I did is I, I cleaned out some of the junk. Uh, and I'm going to talk in the blog post about the way I did that. Uh, I did get some support on that one. I'm going to give a, a shout out to those folks when I launch this thing. Uh, and I added a bunch of other stuff. But one of the things I was thinking about is how can I keep the file size of all this down? How can I reduce the size of the data? And I thought, well, maybe what I could do is exclude, let's say, all passwords under six characters. And my, my mental sort of thinking here was, we know that people fall down to using very, very weak passwords. A bunch of the systems that have been compromised had, in some cases, like literally no password requirements other than you must have something, you know, and it could be like one character. And uh, I thought there'll be a bunch of stuff under that six threshold that I could chop out. But I don't know if six is the right number. Maybe like eight is the right number. You know, so for example, does anyone still allow passwords less than eight characters? So I thought I'll, uh, I'll multitask a little bit. And as part of figuring out the answer to that, I'll write a blog post about how long is long enough minimum password require, minimum password lengths by the world's top sites. And it was kind of interesting what I found, and I'm gonna give you the sort of, the summary version, because you can go and read the whole thing yourself if you want to. The summary version was, I, I checked 15 different sites. Google, Facebook, Wikipedia, Reddit, Yahoo, Amazon, Twitter, Microsoft, Instagram, Netflix, LinkedIn, Twitch, Pornhub. It is in the top 100. I had to check it. It was for scientific purposes. Because <laughs> I had people message me afterwards. They went, you checked Pornhub, but you didn't check a bank. Yes, that's because porn is more popular than finance. That's why. eBay and Imgur. Now, uh, nine of the 15 sites 
allowed a minimum of six characters, which is interesting. And this was, to be honest, it's about what I expected. And I will surprise a bunch of people, but this is one of the things I do kind of pay attention to. So nine of them had six characters, four of them required eight characters. Netflix only required four characters. In defense of Netflix, I suspect this is one of those you're entering things into a TV remote kind of scenarios. So I, I will come back to whether or not that's acceptable in a moment, but I suspect that's their, their sort of reasoning. <laughs> Wikipedia. Wikipedia requires one character. Alarmingly, that is one character more than what they used to require. And yes, that does mean that there was a time where Wikipedia would allow you to have a username and no password. And in fact, I embedded a tweet that refers to a reference of, of that. As I, I learned something when I discovered that. That was kind of wild. Now, let's, uh, let's talk about lengths for a moment because I think there are a few really interesting things about the whole minimum length situation with passwords. When I run my Hack Yourself First workshop, one of the, the first things we do is we do an exercise where people find vulnerabilities with a registration form. And one of the vulnerabilities or security shortcomings, if you like, is that it, it basically does the Wikipedia thing, right? So you must have a character. And then people go, you know, that's too short. And I go, okay, well, what should it be? You know, like what is the right minimum length? And, and this is one of these sort of non-absolute things because you get a range of answers. Some people say eight, some people say 10, some people say 20. And then I'm, I'm sort of like, I know why you said 20, but do you like having customers? <laughs> because if you put it at 20, you're not gonna have many customers anymore. So there's this, this debate, right, about where the password length should be, the minimum length should be. There's no debate about maximum. It should just be very, very big, bigger than what you're feasibly going to need. Minimum is the interesting one. A really important thing to, to point out here is that authentication is moving beyond just matching usernames and passwords. Now, I wrote this blog post some time ago, and I linked to it in this one, uh, well, some time ago, middle of last year. Uh, called Authentication Evolved. And it was basically like modern authentication practices. And it talks about guidance from NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology in the US, and also the NCSC, the National Cybersecurity Center in the UK. And it's got all of this stuff from these guys about here is how you should be doing authentication today. Things like don't force rotation of passwords. This is bad. And if, if that's sort of blowing your mind, go and read the blog post. It's explained there. This is their guidance, government guidance. Now, what they, they actually say to offset things like that, offset other things like they're saying, get rid of complexity rules, is they say, well, you actually should be a lot smarter about the way you do authentication. So, for example, you should be able to have a greater degree of confidence within a range, within a spectrum of whether the person is legitimate or not. Are they signing in from an unusual location? Is it a different user agent? Are we seeing lots of sign-ins from different IPs? Did this IP attempt to sign into multiple places and fail? There's all these little heuristics around confidence levels in how legitimate the person is. Are they coming from Tor? And before the privacy advocates lose their mind, an anonymity network is a very attractive way of people coming and breaking into accounts because of the anonymity thing. So confidence level in legitimacy has to go down. It only makes sense. So there's all of these really interesting sort of ways of doing authentication now above and beyond just matching the two strings, you know, the username and the password. With that in mind, th this one metric, which is like minimum password length, is one part of a much broader, richer ecosystem of how we do authentication. And I gave that spiel simply to say in, in a case like, let's say Netflix with four, it's, it, look, it still feels very short, but that is part of something much more sophisticated. You know, this is not just like, I can, I can go and grab a four character password, uh, chuck it against a username, and it's either gonna let me in or not, and I just get to keep trying and randomizing string. Like, it's, it, it's not that simple anymore. Not for these big sites, anyway. So that, that was that, I, I thought that was interesting. That'll be a, a bit of a go-to blog post for me in terms of this is the way big sites actually implement these things. One of the really fascinating things that I, well, I think it's fascinating. One of the things I think is fascinating about this is that every single one of those minimum lengths is an even number. Now, what does that say about the science behind it? 
you know, like there, there wasn't an algorithm where we pumped all of the variables in, you know, like the usability and, and all the other defense mechanisms and things, and then it spat out a number at the other side. That's not how it works. It is literally people going, yep, that sounds about right, <laughs> you know, six. The other guys are doing that, we'll do that, or eight, or whatever it may be. So there's not a science to it. But have a think about it. It's really, really, really rare to see a minimum length that's an odd number. Now I asked people, I said, look, if you find one, let me know. There's a couple of comments there where people did find sites with, uh, with an, an odd number minimum password length requirement. Uh, several very clever people pointed out that, yeah, Wikipedia is like one. I, I think that is less about saying uh, we, we arrived at an odd number because that was the right amount. And it's more about saying uh, one is the bare minimum that you would need in order to have something. You know, so I don't think this is like a natural organic conclusion that one is right. So anyway, I think that's particularly interesting. Uh, it's just one of those little things that actually got quite a bit of attention, which sort of surprised me a bit. But, you know, that's, uh, that's good that people thought it was an interesting thing. And it does spark a bit of debate. There's quite a lot of comments actually on that one. All right, so there's that. Now, um, sponsoring this week is Gold Security. Gold Security has been there many, many times in the past. They are one of my first sponsors, I think, and they are still there in the sponsor bar today, and they will be a heap throughout 2018 as well. So a big thank you to those guys. Uh, and honestly, like them seeing that this model works well makes them want to do sponsorship, hopefully makes other people see sponsorship, which is just text, and get rid of those lousy stinking ads that we all hate so much as well. So I'm hoping that this evolves and, and, and hopefully gets more people doing, uh, doing what is effectively a responsible ad. So there, there, that's fantastic. And I think that's pretty much it for today. I know it was a little bit shorter. My plan is to try and stop this video and go and finish all the really big pwned password stuff. There's something else really, really significant coming for Have I Been Pwned at the end of the month as well. And I'm gonna talk about that later on. I think it's super cool. I think it will. Uh, I think it will surprise some people, but I think everyone will think this is super cool as well. Uh, and and no, I'm not selling it or anything, you know, like massively crazy like that. So, <laughs> so it's it's something which is really moving it in a positive direction, and I'm really looking forward to talking about that in a few weeks' time. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys go and have uh, an awesome weekend, and I will come back to you in a week's time, also from home. See you guys. <laughs>